On Holding reported earnings before the market opened on Tuesday, and objectively, I think results were really phenomenal. But the stock is down about 14% as I'm recording on Tuesday morning. And it seems like the reaction is really just based on what the numbers were compared to analyst estimates. That's oftentimes what investors do is they go, okay, analysts were expecting this much revenue, this much in earnings per share. You miss those numbers, so the stock falls as a result. But if you actually dig into the numbers, on was actually performing really well. It was the foreign currency translation from US dollars to Swiss francs, which is what on reports in that was the cause of the loss. Without that translation, on would have been profitable and would have been very profitable. Trends would have been trending in the right direction. Revenue would have been up over 30%. So I'm gonna dig through the numbers today and try to explain exactly what's going on from a foreign currency perspective, because I think this is really important to understand given the fact that they do most of their business, 97% of their business is outside of Switzerland, but their financial reporting is in Swiss francs. So that means that there's gonna be a lot of volatility related to those foreign currency changes, especially given the value change in the Swiss franc over the last six to 12 months, which I'll get to as well. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's go to the results and I'll try to walk through the foreign currency changes at the same time. This is the quarterly report and they start with a lot of information about the full year. Uh, sales were 1.8 billion CHF, Swiss, Swiss francs, and that was a growth rate of 46.6% year over year and 55% on a constant currency basis. This is going to be a theme throughout this is there's going to be a number reported in Swiss francs and then a number on a constant currency basis. And what that constant currency basis does is it says, what was the growth if you eliminate the change in currency values? And that's really important for ONS quarter because the currency was so volatile. The Swiss franc actually got more valuable, which means that it makes sales in other countries like the US look lower when you do that translation at the end of the quarter. So they may have bought product with US dollars that they're selling in the US with US dollars. But then when you look through the lens of Swiss francs, it makes those sales look smaller and looks the, makes the profit look smaller. So that's the trend that's going on here. That's why the reported growth rate is gonna be lower than the constant currency growth rate. Now this could reverse and will likely reverse in the first quarter, which I'll get to as well. I wanna focus on the fourth quarter highlights because that's really what investors are res responding to. Uh, net sales increased 22% on a reported basis and on a constant currency basis increased 31%. This is, I think, kind of the first alarming number. When you look at this, you go, hey, I thought this company was growing 30, 40, 50% a year, but now we're only growing 20%. That seems like growth is decelerating. But again, you look at it on a constant currency basis and you get this 31% growth rate. So that's really strong. That's about in line with what management has expected over the next three years. Their long-term guidance was in the high 20% range. And I'll get to why that's they're exactly what they're expecting in 2024 as well. They go through a lot of details. Uh, Direct-to-consumer continues to be really strong, increased 38%. And that was in Swiss francs. So that is outperforming the rest of the market. So I think that's, a, that's generally a positive. And then they did have gross margins of over 60%. And that's what they were targeting long-term is to have gross margins of around 60%. So you look at those numbers and you go, okay, things are going well if you look at this on a constant currency basis, but that's the income side of things. What I have discussed so far is basically above the operating results line. So net sales for the full year up 46.6% for the quarter, which is on the right, 21.9%. Gross profit was up 26% and operating income was up 180%. So again, really strong results when you look at this without considering the changes that happened on the balance sheet. But this is where things get a little bit confusing. There is a $85.5 million loss as a result of foreign currency changes. This is not an operating loss. This does not mean that On was discounting products and losing money on things that they sold. This means that there was cash on the balance sheet, probably in the US, in US dollars, and as the Swiss franc got more valuable during the quarter, those dollars converted to fewer Swiss francs, and so then you have to take what's called a mark-to-market loss. So if you have $100 in the bank account in the US, 
and that converts to 100 Swiss Swiss francs. And then the exchange rate changes from one to one to now for each US dollar, I only get 0.9 Swiss francs. The Swiss franc just got more valuable in relation to the dollar. Now, instead of having 100 Swiss francs worth of value on the balance sheet, because I have that U, those US dollars, now I only have 90 Swiss francs. So now I have to report a 10 Swiss franc loss, despite the fact that I still have the same 100 US dollars in the bank in the US. So hopefully that kind of gives an idea of, of what's going on here. And I'll just pull up this chart because this shows exactly what is going on. Since October, 2023, the Swiss franc conversion rate has gone from about 0.2 dropped all the way to 0.84. So more than a 10% change in the Swiss franc conversion rate to US dollars. So those US dollars that were sitting in the US, if we go down to the balance sheet here, 500 million Swiss francs or so of cash in equivalents, that cash is sitting in a bank account. And if it's not in Swiss francs, which most of their money is not, then it is becoming less valuable on a reported basis, which is why you see this loss right here of 85 million Swiss francs on the income statement. But this is a non-cash loss. If you just eliminate this number right here, you're gonna get to the point where ON's profitability increased dramatically year over year. Their net income would have increased dramatically, but that's not what happened because you have that loss related to foreign currency changes from assets on the balance sheet. The interesting thing, and management talked about this a little bit, is that some of those losses are going to reverse in the first quarter. You can see that the Swiss franc has gotten weaker compared to the US dollar since the end of 2023. So some of those losses will reverse as a result. This is a look at the full annual filing. And what management does here is they lay out what the change is going to be or the gain or loss is going to be depending on the change in the conversion between the US dollar specifically and Swiss francs. So a 10% increase in the US dollar. So this is what has happened in the first couple of months of 2024. There would be a profit of about 71.2 million, million Swiss francs on the income statement, but a loss or a decline in the US dollars value versus the Swiss franc is gonna result in a 71.2 million Swiss franc loss. This is what we saw in Q4, 2023. So what's gonna happen over time is that assets that are outside of Switzerland or that are not denominated in Swiss francs are going to be volatile based on the volatility of the Swiss franc itself. And that is going to really impact the value of what's on the balance sheet not the operations of the business, but it makes its way to the income statement through this line item right here that they call foreign exchange result. So that one number is the reason that on missed estimates for the quarter, it's the reason that sales were a little bit lower than expected for the quarter, and it's going to continue to be volatile over time because on reports in Swiss francs. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So hopefully that kind of explains why the numbers maybe don't match up with what you might have been expecting given the momentum that I think on has in the marketplace today. Operations, very strong, very good results. They actually reduced inventory. I didn't get into that. I didn't dig into the balance sheet too much in this video, but they actually reduced inventory. So their turns are going faster. That's one of the risks with a high growing company that's making hardware is that you have to build inventory to ultimately sell it to customers. So they've done a phenomenal job managing that inventory and still growing the business. Eventually, and this is kind of one of the strange things with a business like this, as growth slows, profitability will increase. Margins are gonna increase because you're spending less as a percentage of sales and things like sales and marketing and building out inventory. So the fact that ON is growing as quickly as it is and it's profitable when, once you take out those foreign currency exchanges is really positive. And management did give guidance, at least some guidance for 2024. They said they expect to grow 30% on a constant currency basis. At Analyst Day in 2023, they said they expected a compound annual growth rate of 26% through 2026. So expecting to grow faster than that in 2024. But again, that is on a constant currency basis. So given the tra trajectory of the Swiss franc over just the last two and a half months since the end of 2023, 
it's likely that the reported growth rate for the first quarter of 2024 is going to be higher than 30% or higher than that long-term growth rate because of the changes in foreign currency valuations. So it gets a little bit confusing looking at on holdings, but at the end of the day, the company is performing phenomenally well, growing around 30% a year. That's just, that is about as good as we can expect for a company of this scale and this size. I think the market's reaction is Honestly, a little bit ridiculous, but not all that surprising given that this is a company that doesn't get a ton of coverage. And so a lot of investors are just looking at what were analysts expecting? Did they beat or miss that? And that's why you get the reaction you do today. But don't be surprised if shares recover a lot of that over the next few days and weeks. This is one of the reasons that I'm a long-term investor because I look at a drop like this in the stock today and I see this as a buying opportunity because the market doesn't fully understand and appreciate how this company operates and what was really reported today. If you have any thoughts or questions, leave those in the comments section below. I'm happy to try to answer those if I can. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.